G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for another Brownlow themed predictions video. You would have seen part one on the channel earlier, basically giving you my general top five, but in today's video, I am gonna go through each club individually and predict who's gonna get the most votes for that team. There's obviously 18 teams to get through, so I'm gonna move through these players pretty quick fire and just give you a short explanation on why I think they will be the best vote getter for each given club. Very recently ticked over 15K subscribers on YouTube, so thank you so much guys for helping me get over over the line. If you want to join the True Footy family by hitting subscribe down below, be much appreciated, but let's get into the video. So going through these teams alphabetically, I'm going to start off with the Adelaide Crows and Rory Led, who enjoyed what could only be described as a pretty enormous season, averaging 32 possessions for a side that kind of struggled on field this year. He hit 40 possessions twice this year and hit 30 uh, possessions eight times. So puts himself in the framework to get votes, you know, whether or not Adelaide's playing well or not. He's projected to get 16 votes on AFL.com. Uh, for an aside that finished bottom four, that's pretty good going. Keys is another contender I considered for the Crows, but I think Laird was just a little bit more consistent and therefore I think he will get more votes. For the Brisbane Lions, I am going to lock in Jared Lyons. Now, this would obviously normally be Lockie Neal having won the brown low last year, but he kind of battled form and an injury this year, which opens it up for a new contender. I did consider Dane Zorko, but I think Lyons has had a bit of an understated year. He averaged 28 possessions a game, and I think he had a flurry of BOG performances sometime in the middle of the year. And obviously, if he polls well on those, that will set him up for a pretty reasonable vote count. He arguably took nine votes between rounds eight and 10. So I expect that will reflect in the votes and he will get the most for the Brisbane Lions. For Carlton, this one is the most simple of the lot. I'm going to go with Sam Walsh. He was uh, obviously an All-Australian this year and he's actually an outside chance to win the medal at $26. I think sport's better playing. The AFL site has him getting 24 votes and in second spot for Carlton, they have Paddy Cripps with just four votes. So I think it's not even really worth discussing too much. Sam Walsh is easily going to win it for Carlton. He was a clear standout player for them this year. That's an easy choice. In what is a much tougher choice, I've got Collingwood here and I've decided to err on the side of Taylor Adams over someone like a Jordan to go. It's kind of slim pickings for the Pies. They didn't have the, the best season on field, obviously finishing bottom two in the end. But I think Adams, despite playing just 14 games, he averaged 27 possessions in those games and I think he might have just picked up a few uh, maybe not BOG but close to games uh, throughout the year to notch up enough votes to take it out. I think he had a fair few 30 plus possession games and uh, I think he did pretty well in the win over West Coast and I think as far as I can tell he's featured well in games Collingwood have won so I think he's just going to pick up enough votes to win it from Dugowie. For Essendon it's Maybe not a clear choice, but I still think Darcy Parrish is the man. I'm kind of doubling down on uh, my top five prediction for him that I did in that other video. He's the seventh favorite on sports bet to win the whole thing overall, paying $31. And I think just his consistency this year puts him ahead of Zach Merritt. He won the most center clearances out of any player this season and doubled his clearances per game average this season as well. So the fact that he took home three medals this year uh, before we even get to the Brownlow medal suggests I think he's going to poll more votes than Merritt. For Fremantle, I'm going to go with the legend David Mundy and early in the season it looked like he was a potential brown low favorite and the question was always going to be you know as an older body how well could he sustain that form throughout the season but in the first six rounds he's predicted to have four best on ground performances which means just there and then he's probably going to get the most votes for Fremantle too. Andrew Brayshaw enjoyed a pretty good year when he was on the park but I don't think it will be enough to steal it from a David Mundy for Fremantle. For Geelong, I'm going to go with Cam Guthrie, who was obviously All-Australian last year, and he backed it up with a solid season, averaging 29 possessions this year as well. Despite a pretty strong midfielder on paper, I think he's lacking competition for votes in this midfielder. The regulars like Danger and Selwood don't seem to be expected to poll well this season. And Guthrie's expected to have at least three BOG performances, so I think he is going to take out the most votes for Geelong. For Gold Coast, another one that is a very simple choice, it's Took Miller, and uh, he had a breakout season. He was a talk of the town at times this year, and frankly, he was the only Gold Coast son even close to being considered for All-Australian. He averaged 32 possessions, seven tackles a game, and he's not eligible for the award, but he's expected to get around 20 votes, and I don't think that's going to even come close to not winning it for the Gold Coast. For GWS, I've gone with Josh Kelly after some consideration. I just think he's been their most consistent midfielder this year, averaging 26 possessions, and he was actually eighth in tackles this season as well. Canelio, I feel like would be his normal biggest threat. However, obviously he's down on form at the moment, so it becomes out of Hopper and Taranto. But I just think Kelly probably notched enough 
enough three vote games to give him the lead over those guys. Next, we have Hawthorne, and I think it's a simple choice. I'm going to go with Tom Mitchell, obviously a previous winner of the Brownlow Medal, and he slowly built into form, uh, particularly in the back half of this year. Started the year fairly slowly. He was expected to only get six votes up till halfway through the season, according to afl.com.au. But on the same website, they predict him to get 17 votes after the bye, which is outstanding. So I actually think he's probably a top five smoky for me. He had most possessions per game, and having won the Brownlow before, he's obviously a proven vote getter. So I think he's going to attract enough votes to take it out for Hawthorne. Next, we've got North Melbourne, and this was a really tough one. I don't think there's an obvious answer here, but I'm going to go with Jai Simpkin. He's not likely to poll too many votes pre-buy, but I think he finished the season consistently enough, and it was a bit of a breakout year for Simpkin. He averaged 27 possessions a game, and he looked really, really good. And it's in a midfield that kind of lacks competition as well, particularly for votes. I think the back half of the season, we'll see him come from behind and take it out for North Melbourne. For Melbourne, again, doubling down on my prediction that Clayton Oliver will win the Brownlow medal. I've got him winning it for Melbourne as as well when the Brownlow predicts you to get 34 votes it's hard to imagine you won't end up with the most votes from your footy club the next biggest contender is Petrarca who I think is projected to get about nine votes less than him but he's going to have at least six three vote games they expect I think it's a clear choice Clayton Oliver for Port Adelaide, I'm going to go with Ollie Wines. And this one is interesting when you look at the AFL.com predictor. They actually have Travis Boat getting the most votes for Port Adelaide, but I'm going to disagree with that. He's the overall Brownlow favorite, even though they expect him to come something like 10th. He's collected over 40 possessions twice this year. He had another 38 possession game as well, and it's been a career best season from him. So hopefully he gets rewarded for that on the night. Next, we have Richmond, and this was a tough one, kind of. I think Dustin Martin's probably going to get the most votes for them, which is a great effort considering he only played 16 games, but there was just a real lack of contribution in that Richmond midfield this year, it has to be said. And the fact that Dusty started the season with what they were expecting is a six-vote, two-game start to the year. I think he is going to win enough votes to take it out for Richmond, but the next biggest contenders in that midfield will probably Bolton and Cochin, and I just don't think they're going to cop enough votes. So Dusty Martin for me. Next, we have Sydney, and I'm going to go with Luke. Luke Parker, and this was a tough one because I think Callum Mills also had a fantastic season. I just think Luke Parker's been a little bit understated, and he's a proven vote getter as well. It was one of his better seasons statistically, he had 28 possessions and more than six clearances a game, and was no doubt a huge driving force in Sydney's improvement this year. He's projected to get 18 votes along with Mills, but I suspect Parker's going to poll better, so I'm going to lock in Luke Parker. For St Kilda, another very simple choice for me. It's got to be Jack Steele. He's the fourth favorite overall on Sportsbet at $6.50. And I've predicted him to come third overall with 29 votes. Start of the year really slowly. In fact, it's quite incredible to see how AFL.com sort of projects his season. He's only going to have four votes to 10 rounds, they reckon, but then explodes to get 18 of the next 21 possible votes. So that is just outstanding. He led the league in tackles this year on top of his 29 possessions and six clearances a game. So he was an All-Australian mid and the clear best mid at St. Kilda. So this is a clear one for me. Next, we have the West Coast Eagles. And this one took some thought, actually. I think I left this one to last in terms of my preparation. I'm going to go with Dom Sheed, though. He had a really up and down year and ended it really poorly, which might have people have a bit of a sour taste in their mouths, but supposedly playing with injuries. So I might give them that excuse, but he did start the season very, very well. He's not going to get many. I think he's expected to get seven votes, which is just sad to really contemplate the season that the Eagles had. I think the AFL website has Gaff getting more votes along with Tim Kelly, but I did notice there was a game there where he had three goals and 28 possessions, Sheed, and didn't cop a vote. So I think he might be a little bit underrated. I'm going to go with Dom Sheed. Saving one of the best for last, the Western Bulldogs should have Marcus Bontempelli get the most votes for them. He's the third favorite overall, paying $4. I expect him to come second behind Clayton Oliver, and he's projected to have 32 votes. And amazingly, the AFL site have him getting nine three-vote games, which is 27 votes in itself, which usually would win you the Brownlow medal. So that is absolutely mad. He finishes the year not great, but I think he and McRae generally still votes off each other previously, but I think Bont's gone to a new level. So uh, as the logic I used in my previous video, I think Bont will get more votes than McRae this year. And as such, we'll take it out for the Bulldogs. Anyway, guys, that was my short, sharp, sweet little predictions for each club's best Brownlow vote getter in this upcoming Brownlow. As I've said in other videos and around the place generally, we're going to be live streaming the Brownlow medal count on Sunday night. So make sure you tune in to join along with us. Going to have a few drinks, going to be good fun. Get involved in the chat. As always, guys, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.